Ten Mile River Camps is the largest council-owned property in the United States and has been the New York City Boy Scout summer camp for over 75 years. Since 1927, over one million scouts have camped at TMR, hiked its trails, and canoed its lakes and rivers. How is TMR acquired? Why is it so large and distant from New York City? Who selected this site and raised one million dollars to purchase and develop it? Where were the first camps located, and who designed and built them? In 1917, the Federation of Councils of Greater New York leased summer camps at the Kahnawake Lakes in Harriman State Park for the five New York City Borough Councils. Scouts attended borough camps and were assigned to provisional troops with leadership provided by the camp. By 1920, the Kahnawake Scout Camps were known as the largest boys camp in the world with over 3,000 scouts in 21 separate camps, each with a dining hall and a capacity of 100 boys. Scouts used long rowboats to get around and transport supplies. Each summer, famous dignitaries visited the camps. Harvey A. Gordon, chief camp director, was in charge. While the Kahnawake Scout Camps were very successful, there were still problems. The Palisades Interstate Park Commission owned the camp property, and their approval was necessary for any changes. Space for the new camps was also limited. With increased attendance through the 1920s, more and more camps were built, until it became difficult to operate one without intruding on another. In 1922, Franklin D. Roosevelt organized the Boy Scout Foundation of Greater New York. One of his first goals was the acquisition of a permanent camp for the New York City Scouts, adequate for all time. In 1924, Roosevelt appointed Judge Frederick Kernikin, chairman of a campsite search committee. Also involved in the search were Harvey A. Gordon, Judge James C. Cropsey, Herman W. Merkel, and Arthur Proctor. The committee took a map of the eastern states and drew a circle with a diameter of 50 miles from New York City. They went over the land in this area very carefully to see if there was a site large enough with lakes, swamps, timberlands, and a few main roads. With memories of the congested Kahnawake Lakes, the committee wanted a very large parcel of land. It was assumed that the camp attendance would continue to grow at the rapid rate of the 20s. Over the next two years, more than a dozen sites were examined in Monmouth, Rockland, Putnam, and Dutchess counties. By December 1925, the search came down to five sites in New York and New Jersey. The Kittredge property was preferred, but it was also the most expensive. Judge Cropsey was unable to obtain an option to purchase the property for $400,000. With a cost of $500,000, it was twice as expensive as any other of the four sites being considered. By May 1926, negotiations over the Kittredge property deal were deadlocked. Meanwhile, in the Kahnawake Scout camps, growing intrusion by picnickers and the public became more of a problem. It was determined that options could be placed on land satisfying all of the requirements in the towns of Tustin, Bethel, Highland, and Cushecton in Sullivan County. The real estate firm of Gowl and Camphor was authorized to purchase the property from the landowners, but did not disclose the role of the Boy Scout Foundation. Secrecy was considered very important. The original landowners never knew that the foundation was behind this until after the purchase. In April 1927, the Foundation initiated a public campaign to raise $1 million to purchase and furnish what was described as the largest Boy Scout camp in the world, with a capacity of 5,000 scouts. Judge Kernikin was general chairman of the fundraising campaign, with committees in various trades and businesses throughout New York City. Sites under consideration were not identified because the Foundation was afraid of being exploited by the landowners. Many businessmen donated to the campaign, including Mortimer Schiff, who donated $100,000. On October 8, 1927, the 33 landowners signed title of their property to Gowell and Camphor at the Monticello Courthouse. Gowell and Camphor then passed title of the 9,776 acres to the foundation. 
Harvey Gordon was brought in from the Kanawaki Scout Camps as Director of Construction. Also involved with designing and constructing TMR were Herman W. Merkel, Clyde R. Place, and Grosvenor S. Wright. Each borough designed a camp to satisfy its specific needs. The camps were spaced far apart to provide adequate space for hiking and overnight camps. A construction camp was erected on Turnpike Lake. Two sawmills were built near Wildcat Pond and Half Moon Lake to cut the timber needed for all the structures in the camps. Sand, rock, and gravel for roads and sewer systems were obtained right from the camp property. For the Brooklyn Scout Camps, 11 100 Scout Camps were constructed on Rock Lake, each with a mess hall and dock, latrine, wash houses, and a camp master's cabin, storehouse, tent sites, and complete sewer system and treatment plants were also built. The Rock Lake Country Club's main building was remade into Tahlequah Lodge, headquarters of the camps. 4,000 meals were cooked daily and shipped to nine of the camp dining halls in insulated heater stacks. Camp Aquihanga, the Staten Island camp, had the red jacket cabins with chimneys and lockers, shelter cabins, Adirondack lean-tos with reflective fireplaces and tent sites. There was an enclosed dining hall, wash house, waterfront, camp director's cabin and trading post. Seventy scouts and scouters first occupied the camp over the 1928 Columbus Day weekend. Camp Ranaqua, the Bronx camp, was on Wildcat Pond, too small to use and had to be enlarged. A 600-foot dam was constructed, turning Wildcat Pond into the 35-acre Lake Nyanku. Unit A was the administrative area with the blockhouse and camp director's cabin. Unit C served scouts in a kosher dining hall, and Unit E served scouts in a non-kosher dining hall. Units C and E each had their own campmaster cabin, tent sites, and waterfront. In 1930, the Crystal Lake Tract was purchased, greatly expanding the TMR property. Camp Manhattan used many buildings from Camp Utopia for boys, including the dining hall, handicraft lodge, infirmary, and caretaker's house. There was also a waterfront, chief's cabin, aquatics lodge, and tent sites for all campers. Camp Man, the Queen's Camp, took over from the well-met girls' camp, eight buildings and a waterfront. Stag Hall contained the administrative center, trading post, and medical office. Lakeside Division and Central Division each had its own dining hall, but shared a waterfront. Patrols of eight scouts stayed either in large tents on wooden platforms or in large open-air cabins. In 1933, President Franklin D. Roosevelt visited Camp Man and talked about scouting. Fellow members of the Boy Scouts of America. I haven't been here for two years. All sorts of things have happened up here in, in that time. Ten Mile River was only five years old, but a tremendous future was ahead for TMR and New York City scouting. <laughs>